fabulous. How are you? Peter Ferragini's here with us today. How are you, my friend? Very good. Good. Thank nice you very to much. see you. Thank nice you so much for you. being on. Now, you brought all this, and I totally lied to Simcoe County saying I planted everything. You did all this. I did this. And your team. We did. Your massive team over yeah. there at, yeah. the, at the greenhouse. Not so, so massive. Not so There's massive. Well, fam, small family business. I was going to say, that's what's great about Ferragini's. You walk in, and it, it's a kind of family feel to it. Yeah. Right, and everybody knows everything about plants and beyond, to say the well, least. Right? Um, yeah, a lot of people do. They want to. <laughs> yeah. Right, there's quite a bit to know about them. That's for sure. For sure. No, it's obviously our fall season, so we did all our work in the spring. Yep. Right, and kind of everybody kind of got lazy because <laughs> they just let the summer thing happen. And hey, you people know. go to the cottages. They right? enjoy the cottages. Right. They right? Took a little off, a bit off from the yep. landscaping. But now it's fall, so yeah. what are people doing? Well, things right now, because of the cool weather overnight, like things have been starting to look a little tired. Things don't look as nice and as vibrant as they did. Right. People right. aren't going to the cottages as much anymore, right? Unless yeah. you want to freeze in the water. No. So now what they're doing is, is they're putting out some new color for the fall yeah. so that they can spruce up their house again, and it looks great for Thanksgiving and such, especially when you have family over. Right. You want your place to look amazing, like yeah. you did it yourself. Well, right? as you said, like, I mean, there's different colors obviously embraced for fall. Which yep. is good, but like that's okay. It's a good thing, isn't it? That the the darker colors are a good thing. The rich colors are. Good. People get scared sometimes. I, I wonder, like you know, <laughs> the the big vibrant. You have a vibrant yellow here. That's what you fantastic. go with. You can go with the yellows. You can go with hot pinks. Mums come in hot pinks and purples. But as soon as people okay. start seeing the rusty bronzes and dark reds, <laughs> they start freaking out because they know that. Out. They know that the weather's getting cool and yeah. Well, that, cool I, think that, I think that's probably more what's associated. I can't go to the cottage anymore. Exactly. But embrace fall. Have fun with it. Oh, and, for sure. And we're we're gonna talk a bit, and I know Jen's gonna do things. She may rip apart some plants. I'm I'm kind of worried about <laughs> are, that. Are you, I saw you, Jen. You stop her from doing that kind of stuff. That's but, okay. But, she can have fun. She right? can have it's, it's that's what that's what gardening is. It's a <laughs> hobby. You gotta have fun with it. You can't get frustrated by it, right? That's it. Now, do you have people coming in like myself who are like, you know what? I want something extremely low maintenance. Oh yeah. That's just <laughs> all the time. Oh yeah. It's, it more often than not. I'm more sure. often than yeah, not. Yeah. Yeah. So a lot of people are like, I want to throw something in my garden. I never want to touch it again. It's like, <laughs> well. There's low maintenance, but there's not no maintenance. Yeah, right, there's right, always right. something to do. So is there something in the fall then, that, you know, for, for someone like me who would walk into the greenhouse and go, you know what, I want the, the front of my house to look beautiful. What type of, I guess, plant would I use or, or flower would I use? A lot of the fall stuff is really, really easy to take care of. Okay. Because the weather right now is a lot cooler, it doesn't require as much watering. So you're not basing your schedule getting out there to give it a shot of water. Right. So right. during the nights, they're not going to be drinking up too much because it's, right. it's not that hot, the weather. So you're going to have mums, you're going to have cabbage. They love the cool now, weather. Now, what's interesting is it cabbage. Because, yes. Because, you know, usually it's a salad or it's something. Fla right. Flowering cabbage. But it's an actual flowering flower. Cabbage. And it's got a lovely purple that's yeah. happening in there. I don't there even is. See that. Yeah. It actually, the head will open up more and you'll get a lot more color out of it. Really? I mean, they are edible. However, okay. I wouldn't really recommend it because they're, they're not exactly the tastiest I was going to say, world. they're more for decoration yeah, in this exactly. case. Exactly. Now, exactly. I know obviously you brought planters and pots kind of thing, obviously, for us today. Yep. But are they, do these all go into the ground or do you recommend they stay in the pots? That, that it's completely up to you. I mean, changes. a lot of people can put it in their garden if their garden is looking empty. Okay. Or you can just leave it on your uh, doorstep, right? I right. mean, if you want to have something in a pot, easy to take care of. Right. But the these are actually perennials. Fall mums are perennials. So if you planted it in the garden, it will come back the following year. Right. And I noticed we have some bee friends. Yeah, the around. bees tend Hello. bees tend to like Hello. flowers, but that's a big bee, so leave him alone. Leave it, don't touch him. Yeah. Don't arm wrestle him. Same you, with the honey bees. You don't want to touch those you, guys. They're going extinct, eh? But that's so. what's great about, you know, helping the bees <laughs> is a good thing because they help us in, in yeah, return. In, exactly. In the wonderful circle of life. You well, got Peter, it. we're gonna have some fun with it. Don't let Jen rip apart too many things. Now we'll see what happens. Yeah, she's very demanding at times. I can't promise anything. She's the host of the show. Uh, <laughs> we'll see how it goes. <laughs> Stay with us on daytime. We'll be right back. Welcome back to daytime here on Rogers TV. We are outside squeezing every last little bit of sunshine possible, getting ready for gardening au naturel. We're joined by Peter Ferragini from Ferragini Greenhouses, who is here to tell us how we can get involved with our gardens and getting stuff planted for the fall. So thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me. Well, you brought a wide variety of plants and uh, just to be able to get different types of options for our fall gardening. And uh, what do we got here? That is a fall mum, a chrysanthemum. Okay. So this is uh, really, really good. A lot of people like using these for the fall. They love the cool weather. That's usually when they start 
they can last a lot longer in the cool weather. So usually when you're choosing yourself a chrysanthemum, you want to get something when you go to the garden center, something that's a little bit more closed up, something along this line. So that way that the flowers can last you a lot longer. That's a really good point because when I go, I want to get them when they're more like these bright, beautiful, already open still type okay. of flowers. That's still okay because you got quite a few buds and don't be afraid to take off the heads when they die. Deadhead them. I know flower enthusiasts will kill me right now, but when the flowers are dead, literally just break it down on the stem. Get rid of that flower so that more buds can come up and more flowers can show. Okay, I'm taking my rings off because I'm about to get dirty here. So you just... I'm well, worried. This looks, this looks like it's alive to me. That is. It definitely is. I was just giving an example of how to pick off the flowers. Okay, so what am I looking for if I'm deadheading? What do I look uh, for? You want to find flowers that are already spent. Um, for example, I don't, <laughs> for example, I could bring up this one you didn't here. Bring, this is not this, yours. This one wasn't brought by me. Not However, brought by you. this needs deadheading. Well, actually, this needs throwing out by now. But at this point, when the flowers actually start to go a bit brown, yeah, that's when you want to pick it off because usually there are buds underneath. These actually have a couple of buds oh, look still, at that. and those buds will come up and flower. So, but by having all this dead stuff on top, the flowers will never show up. So you'll never get those flowers coming out. All right, so that's important. But I'm always afraid to pick them off because I just, it feels like I'm hurting them. Am I Well, that's them? what I mean. No, a lot of people get worried about that, but it's like your hair. Yeah. Flowers love haircuts. They can actually branch out and bush out even more, right? They become more healthier. So it's the same with your hair. You need to get a haircut once in a while to mm -hmm. make it healthy. Otherwise you get dead ends and you know split, split ends, ends or whatever. No, we could just go on and on yeah, and on. Yeah, one big thing about my, no. <laughs> but uh, yeah, you want to give them a little haircut here and there. It doesn't hurt the plant. It actually does, it does much better for the plant. Okay, so when you end up going to the greenhouse to go and get your plants, uh, specifically with this, are they very fragile when you take them out of the pots and planters? Like, do you need to be careful? How should I go about taking this one out? If you were to plant a mum plant with something like this, mums are actually very fragile and the branches can break very, very easily. So if you were to plant a mum, what you want to do is, is you want to place your hand in the bottom, put your okay. fingers between the stem. All right. That's right. Now tip the pot, squeeze the pot a little bit to loosen up the bottom soil, yep. and then pull the plant out. Pull it out. Oh, there we go. Just like there that. you go, exactly. Now you can take this plant, put it in, if you have a planter or a garden or something, just make a hole with the soil yeah. and then drop it inside and then cut, mound it back up. If you go to grab it by the top of the head, you can easily snap the branches and then you got no mum anymore. And then you got pud to mum, right? Yeah, I guess. Yeah. So Deformed. When, <laughs> when you end up putting this in, in, in a planter or in your garden, how deep of a hole do you have to dig it? Does it need to be completely covered right here, same level? What Usually about same level is where you want to keep it. Where yeah. the soil is, that is where you would put the base of the plant. Okay. So it's very simple, very straightforward. You don't want to bury it too much, obviously, because when the plant's underground, yep. it won't do well, and then the plant can actually rot from all the, oh. from the moisture and everything, just holding it in there, mm -hmm. the plant can rot. And if it's too high, the roots, depending on the development, may not be able to suck up the water properly. Okay, so keep it level. It's just that's, keep that's level. about it. Just that's keep all you gotta know. That's all you gotta do. When do you start planting these types? Fall, now. Right this now? is the time you wanna get involved with this stuff. Uh, now that the nights, I was saying earlier, now that the nights are getting a lot cooler, you're talking dropping down to four or five degrees, mm -hmm. everything's starting to look a little tired, not as vibrant as they used to, right? Especially if you have begonias and impatience. Those things are not gonna look that sharp right now. So you'd wanna pull them out and mm -hmm. start putting in some fall stuff. Again, you wanna look for something that's not fully bloomed out because if it's fully bloomed out, you're not gonna get much time out of it at all. Right. So you wanna get something that is still just coming along and can flower for the rest of the season. Mm -hmm. So talk about the choices and options that you brought for fall gardening. What did you bring here for us today? Very, very popular in fall time. You've got all your fall mums, your chrysanthemums that we've talked about already, your flowering cabbage and your flowering kales. They've got beautiful, beautiful color right in the center. And uh, like this will open up even further and it'll show you more purple. I've got one down there too that'll have more white in the center. You've got kales and cabbages, so you've got different uh, foliage textures. And then along with grasses, grasses are very, very popular in the fall time. 
A lot of grasses aren't perennial, mm -hmm. so if you are looking for something perennial, you just make sure that you ask somebody who knows what they're talking about. But a lot of people assume all of them are, and they're not. Mm -hmm. So other than that, there are uh, pansies are really popular in the fall time. Icicle pansies. I didn't bring any today. Uh, asters, fall asters, are really really popular in the fall as well, and you get a lot of color out of those. And do all of these things grow well together? Is there anything like should not be close together in your garden, like? Not really. Like no. I'm, I'm a Picasso myself. I like to just throw things together, slap it on the board, and see what <laughs> happens. Right? All the mixed colors is great. Um, when you're dealing with stuff that's perennial, though, if you figure that this mum is going to come back for you the following year, because mums are perennial, they yeah. will come back. You want to make sure you give it the space if you're planting a bunch of them side by side, because the following year it'll come bigger. Right. Mums usually grow the size of the container. Mm -hmm. That's why this one will grow this big, whereas this guy will stay this big. Same variety. But you're not getting this. You're not getting the bigger sizes, right? Mm -hmm. When you have it in a garden and the garden's wide open, it can get much bigger. Much, much bigger. Yeah. Now, when you come to uh, to the to the greenhouse, do you guys know? Obviously, you know all about this information. You have a rookie coming in, wants to plant something for fall. Yep. Do you have to have the full sun shade? What do you deal with with the uh, the temperament of these plants in the fall? Well, these usually particularly like more sh more sun. Make yeah. sure you take a look at the tags. Most plants should have tags with them. They will tell you if they're full sun to shade. Yeah. A lot of people will jump on things just because they look pretty, mm. right? It happens a lot. So you just want to make sure that you're getting the proper plants for the sections because if you put something that's meant for full sun in a full shaded area, yeah. you're not going to get that look that you're looking for. You mm -hmm. want it to be nice and vibrant. looks amazing at the garden center. You put it in your garden in a shady spot, give it a week, the thing's not going to look as nice as it did. Right. So you just got to make sure you read the tags. Don't be afraid to ask questions. A lot of people get really... Um, you know, they're held back when they get in the garden center. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it becomes too much. There's way too much going on. They don't know what to do. Ask questions. It's really, really simple. Gardens should be a hobby. They should be really fun. They shouldn't be frustrating. They shouldn't be frustrating. We're going to find out how you have everyday options in your own house to take care of your plants. Stay with us. We've got more to come right here on Daytime.